Hi there, this is Doris Bender from Library Arts. I want to thank you for joining me today. Do you come from a household where there's no pets allowed? Well, what if we were able to create some fun pets of our own and you could even keep it in your room? How about some pet fish? Well, today we're going to create a craft that looks like a miniature aquarium in a little bucket with swimming fish, seagrass, and even a few fish bubbles on the outside of our container. Comes with a lid, it's mess free, and it's so much to create, uh, so much fun to create, and so easy to create because we're using model magic, sand, shells, gravel, a little bit of glue, and a lot of imagination. Let's go ahead and go for the materials, and we'll get started soon. Let's begin by going over the materials you're gonna need for your aquarium. Now what I have here is a little um, clear plastic bucket that is used for gift giving. And it comes with a little lid. So it's like a crafting bucket. I think it's great as a little mini aquarium. So I'm gonna put that aside, even with it. I love the little handle it has on it. We're gonna use some florist foam. Now this is the dry foam you can buy at a craft store. Um, I bought it in bricks and cut it down to smaller bricks and then just slightly shaved off the sides, which is very easy to do because this is super, super soft. And I measured it to the size of the floor of my aquarium. So how did I get that size? Well, I went to the lid, here's the lid, flipped it over and used that interior circle to show me that that's approximately the size I want uh, for the base of the aquarium. This is gonna allow me to stick dowels, these little uh, sticks in later on. So that's very important. And it is going to be smaller than uh, what I have in here, but that's okay because I need that to um, fit it in and then I can add glue and sand and other details to fill it up. You're also gonna have some Model Magic clay here. I've decided to use some neon colors, thinking of the fun neon fish you often see in an aquarium. I have some sand, some shells collected at the beach. I have some aquarium gravel that I've also bought in neon colors. It comes in different colors, so you could choose. And now these are little candy sticks. Like if you were making lollipops, uh, you can get in the bakery section at the craft store. You could also use skinny little wooden dowels or craft sticks if that's what you have. Of course, you're gonna need a little bit of glue and that's about it. Other than you might want um, a black marker if you want to add, you know, a few details onto your fish, like for the eyes. So you might want to have a little permanent marker around, but that's not even necessary. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure you've taken the lid off of your container. And by the way, the lid will come off if you use a little ring little washer they used to pop it off right here in the edge so that actually came with a container but keep that lid aside you may want to put it on afterwards so before we put anything together just wanted to go over all the materials and now that we've done that we will start creating in the next video so i'll see you in a moment let's start putting the aquarium together so the first thing we want to do is we want to secure our um Forest foam, which is about, oh, I'd say three quarters of an inch thick to the bottom interior of your bucket. So I have some glue here. This is tacky glue, which is great for using um, with crafts. And I'm not going to stick my hand down there, but I am going to pour some glue in. Not all of it. And then I am going to put my hand in here and I'm going to spread the glue around so that it goes near the edges of the circle. So if you look in there, I'm spreading the glue with my craft stick. It's not messy, not yet at least. It might get messy in a little bit, but right now I just want to make sure I have glue going all the way to the edges because when I add sand and gravel, I might need that extra glue. So there we go. We got a nice layer of glue on the bottom of the inside of my pail. Now I'm going to carefully put my little cookie sized florist foam piece in here. Now be careful and try your best, there we go, 
to just get it in the middle like that. That's perfect, okay? Now, I'm also going to pour some additional glue on top of this. Now, you could have done this beforehand, but I think that would be pretty messy. So I'm gonna do something similar. I'm going to um, spread the glue all over the top with my stick. I'm not gonna worry if a little glue gets on the edges of the pail. That's just the way it is, and that will dry clear. So I'm just spreading it around the top and I want to get a little on the sides of my uh, florist foam here too. Again, I just want to make it feel like it's kind of a gravelly, sandy bottom. So I'm just going to scrape some of that sand actually along the bottom edges of my container, just like this. So that my sand has a chance to grab and make it look like a gravelly, sandy bottom at the base. So I got a pretty good amount of glue rubbed along the bottom and edges and on top. So I'm gonna put that glue aside. Next, I'm going to sprinkle some sand in. And I want it to go not only on top, but along the sides as well. And you can even dump all that sand in there and swish it around so it gets into the sides and sticks to that glue give it that sandy bottom feel and put it on top. Okay, so I have a lot of sand in there and I'm just gonna leave it like that. Next, I wanna put a little more drizzle of glue for some gravel, colorful gravel to go on top. So I'm gonna give it a little stir. I know kids love to stir their glue and I'm going to just sort of drizzle some glue all around on top of my sand to give it that, again, sort of gravel bottom. And I'm just gonna, again, just swirl it around, move it around, even on top of that sand, even though it's just been added, the more we can cover the green, the better, I think. So there we go. Let's, before we actually put that gravel down, let's add some of those shells. So remember the shells I said I had that I collected from the beach? We can drop a few of those in. Got a nice shell here. Just gonna put my hand in, maybe put it over here. I got a little shell that I like right here. Again, I am gonna go ahead, whoops, put my hand in there. Add a couple shells, and put one over here, there. Now I'm going to add some gravel. And that too is can be used to cover up the sides. So now we have a really fun gravel, sand, and shell-filled bottom. So I'm gonna stop right here, let you put your fun materials into your pail. And then when I join you next, we'll talk about creating some fish and maybe even some seaweed for our mini aquarium. Have fun, see you in a minute. Next, we are ready to take our fun neon colored um, clay and create some fish. Now the fish for this tank should not be very big and the sticks I have here are not very long because I want them to go into uh, the aquarium and have the fish standing above. So this is like four inches long, but with a pair of scissors, you can also make them a little shorter so that you can uh, make a, you know, fish at different heights. So I have three here. So if you cut one of them, you can end up with like five pieces. So I'm gonna put my stick down for a minute and let's think about fish. Fish are really, um, they can be colorful, they can be striped. They shouldn't be very big though, because you have to think, how big would a fish be in my aquarium? Probably not bigger than this, which is probably about the size of a quarter. So I wanna keep my fish on the small side. If they're also too big and heavy, they're gonna be problematic in terms of um, uh, standing up in the aquarium because the weight will be too much. So what I'm doing right now is using my fingers to just shape a little fish, almost like a goldfish type fish. They don't have to be fancy. But it is fun to imagine putting some um, stripes 
or details on them. Maybe you want to uh, give it some colorful fins in a contrasting color. So here I have a pink fin, and since the Model Magic Clay sticks to itself so easily, it's a great little thing to do. So there, look at that. I just took like a little triangle shape, stuck it on there for one fin. I'm gonna take another triangle shape and I'm going to try to make it a similar shape. Let's see if I can do that. Pinch it in here. Yeah. And I'm gonna put that on the bottom of my fish because they typically have an upper fin and a lower fin, just like that. I often notice that the eyes of the fish can be quite dark, or at least the camera makes them look dark. So I'm gonna take a tiny bit of my black, and because my fish is gonna have an eye on both sides of its head, I'm gonna put one here. There's one, whoops. There's one fish eye. Gonna flip it over, and now I'm gonna stick another fish eye on the other side, just like that. You can also use your stick if you need to, just to press it in like that. I might say, well, I'd like some, I'd like a little smile on my fish, just for fun. Not that fish really have smiles, or maybe I wanna make some gills. Maybe I wanna make it look like there's a little gills on the side of the fish. You can put a little curve right here, like for a little gill. I can take another little piece of pink make another little gill right here and i'm going to do the same thing to the other side so you can have fun making fish any way you like maybe you want to add um, some lines or stripes on the fish's tail or maybe another fun thing to do which i'm going to do in a moment rather than put a smile on the fish you can actually open up the fish's mouth and the way you can do that is with a pair of scissors. So I'm gonna put this right here like that. Okay, I have two gills on either side of my fish and I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm gonna put a little snip there and now my fish has an open mouth. So that's another thing you can do to make your fish a little more interesting. Maybe I'll put um, a little yellow stripe going on the tail from here to there, like a little V. And of course, I'm gonna do it on the other side because when we think of sculpture, we think of sculpture as being in the round. You look at it and appreciate it from all angles, not just the front. That would be 2D, like on a sheet of paper or a drawing. So I'm going to just do that, and now I have a finished fish. So I want you to play around with your clay, come up with three smallish fish, remember the size of your aquarium to keep in mind how big your fish should be. Set that aside, create some fish, and I'll see you back in a little bit. We're back. Now I have created three little fish, as you can see from the first one I created with the uh, green and the yellow and the pink. Now I have two other additions, one that reminds me of the iconic goldfish cracker, but in pink, and then a mixed media kind of mixed colored fish over there. So i have already um, thinking about the heights of the little poles that I want to use with them. And now what I'm going to do before I actually put them into my little aquarium is I'm going to create some seaweed effect to partially hide some of the pole. So I'm gonna take some of my green and I might take a little bit of the yellow and give it a little mixing. Cause one thing good to know about this is that you can mix Model Magic Clay almost like paint. So I can get a really cool effect like this, which is a marbleized, or I can get more of a yellow green if I keep mixing it. I like the marbleized look. I'm gonna stretch this out and sort of twist the ends a little bit to give it a sort of a seaweed effect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it partially around my pole like this. Now, the, the one thing I want to do, and I'm going to actually tear some off the bottom here in order to achieve that, is I want to leave some of the stick uncovered, or at least only slightly covered, because I need to have that stick to go into the um, 
florist foam. So if I were to put this fish on here, he looks like he's coming sort of out of the, the um, seaweed that I have going around my stick. Now I'm gonna take the shorter stick and I think for this one, I'm gonna do a little, have a little fun mixing some colors. So I'm gonna make an orange because just like yellow and red would make orange, I can make a fun orange with yellow and pink. And um, this one, I'm not gonna leave marbleized. I'm gonna mix it until it makes a new color because I think that would be kind of cool to have a new color. So you see that kind of light orange coming in? I might leave a few streaks of yellow in it. I'm gonna use this on the shortest of my sticks and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to twist a little bit to again create that kind of seaweed look and then I'm going to wrap it again around either side taking off the bottom again so I have that bit of stick exposed and then I'm going to put my little fish maybe this is bending over and I have my fish right there because again you can do that you can um take the clay, bend it, make it look like it's seaweed that's sort of moving in the water. And now I finally have my last one. I think I'm gonna just make this a little bit longer. And for that one, I'm going to use, um, I think a little more of the yellow and green mixed. And I think I'm gonna put more green than yellow this time because now I'm beginning to run out. And I could even mix, oh, I don't know, a little bit of white in it just to give it a little extra color. And this is my biggest stick, so maybe I want a little extra clay. So again, I, I personally like that marbleized look. You might like your colors more mixed completely, but I'm gonna wrap it around the stick. Again, leaving a couple inches exposed at the bottom. So I'm wrapping it around my stick not an inch to really more of a quarter inch or a half inch, wrapping it around, wrapping it around. And now I'll just use my scissors to split the top here into maybe um, a little bit of a, a seaweed there and a little seaweed coming over here and give the whole thing a little bit of a twist. And if I think that's too thin, make it a little thicker and just play with it. Then, of course, leave room for your fish. So go ahead and make your little twisted seaweed pieces, leaving room at the top and at the bottom so that you can stick it in the floor foam and you have room to put your fish in on top. And I'll see you back here so we can assemble our aquarium. Have fun. See you soon. Okay, we're back again, and I must say, I couldn't help myself. I took a couple bits of the little extra Model Magic clay, and I decided to add some patterns onto my seaweed. So certainly an idea you could explore if you wish. And I have my three seaweed stalks of different heights here to play with. Now, let's talk about putting the fish onto the stick before we actually um, embed it into... Um, the aquarium. So one thing you wanna do, actually I'm thinking I'm gonna reverse that. Let's put, we're gonna put the seaweed into the aquarium first, then we're gonna put the fish on top. I think that might be more sensible. So holding the top end of your seaweed, figure out where you want that fish to go. And if you just give it a little plunge, you can see how easily that went right into the foam and you have the gravel and the sand and the shells all there. And then I want to put the little one sort of nearby over here. I'm going to give that a little push into the sand. So again, I have two bits of seaweed. And now I have a third one that I'm going to put over here. So we have a little triad of seaweed shapes. And they look very sturdy indeed for holding my fish. Now we get to decide which fish is gonna go where. So what I'm gonna do is take my fish, my first fish, and I'm going to put, I'm thinking that right behind the fin here is where I wanna put um, 
him onto his stick. And I'm going to just go back to my glue and just to make sure I get a really good bond between that glue and the stick, I'm going to take a little dollop, just a tiny dollop of glue and put it into the clay so that clay has a chance to really grab onto the stick and very gently I'm going to come over here and put my fish on and press them into place. Looks pretty good so far. Now I may want to just adjust it or I might say oh gee I'm seeing a little bit of that yellow that I don't want to see that white stick I don't want to see. I can go in here and I can press it in place to hide that one two three that wasn't a problem and I can even take my stick here and adjust that clay so it looks a little bit more part of the body there I think my fish looks fabulous there with the seaweed you can see it's swimming here in the water now I'm going to do my next fish which is going to be well, I was going to do this one. Let me think. I'm going to put the little pink one here. Or the pink one. I still like the pink one down there. So I'm going to turn this fish a little bit facing that way. And I'm going to do the same thing with my second fish. I'm going to find a little spot. I think this one will be right in front of the fin. Take off that little bit of pink clay that went there. Put a little bit of glue. Again, right where the opening of that cut is, just so it has some glue to help it stick onto that stick. And then think about what direction you want your fish to be going. I want mine to sort of be going in the direction of the other fish, and I'm just going to adjust my seaweed a little bit downwards. And I'm liking that too. I have two fish in my aquarium like this, you can see them from the side. And now I'm gonna do a third, my final fish, little tiny cut. And here's the advantage of not putting the fins is what I'm finding is that if you don't put the fins on, you have a little bit more room to make that gap, but that's up to you. So I'm gonna take a little bit of glue again into that little cut. The glue is gonna dry clear, so I'm not worried about that. You probably don't want to do more than three fish only because you will probably run out of space. So I see a little bit of that pink showing on the other side that leaves a little gape, a little area I don't want to see. So I'm going to push that stick up and I'm going to take a little bit of pink and again, I'm just going to press it onto the fish if I can, <laughs> sticking to my finger here. I could do this. I think I'm going to try another way. I'm going to use this stick and yeah, press it onto my little fish and now shape it so that it looks like again part of the fish's body. So I'm just using my little white stick here, an additional one that I had left over, and I'm just going to press it and shape it so it looks like it's part of that little fish. That looks better already. And I can turn it around and see what it looks like over here. I think I want to push my little fish away from there. I have a little bit of this seaweed touching it, so I might want to move that. And while the clay is still soft, you have that opportunity to bend it, shape it any way you like. I'll bring the seaweed over here a little bit until you get it exactly how you want it. Like, I actually like the seaweed touching the fish's body over here, so I'll do that. And that leaves you with an amazing little aquarium full of delightful fish. So go ahead and add yours, and then when you come back, we'll take a look at the finished result. And we're not done yet. How about some additional embellishments? So one thing you can do, remember I told you you might want a marker. If you want to sort of decorate the bottom here, you can disguise any glue 
that you have on the bottom here with a little bit of marker like this and create the feeling of little grasses growing up the side of your aquarium. Add some fun, distracting colors and textures. I mean, you can make your grasses short and long and go all the way around the edge, which I'm not gonna do yet. I'm gonna finish that after I finish talking to you. But you also can use these little gems, which I'm also forgot to mention at the beginning, but these little gems will be a real fun surprise if you stick them on the outside of the container, hold them there for a few seconds so that they hold on. And that glue is going to dry clear, so you don't have to worry about that. Pick up your gem, stick it on. So just a little bit of glue is all you need to create almost like bubbles around the aquarium. So I'm going to do a few more. And then again, just a dot of glue. And then you can stick the gems on and add that fun feeling of little bubbles. So I'm gonna go around and finish coloring in my green and add a few more gems, and then I'll come back and join you here to review our pot. Welcome back to the conclusion of our craft today. How did you do with your aquarium? Did you have fun making this little aquarium in a bucket with little fish swimming and a little bit of seagrass and air bubbles to boot? Well, I know I had fun making it with you, and I hope you enjoyed it too. So this is Doris Venter of Library Arts. Thank you so much for joining me today. In the meantime, stay creative, stay well, and I hope to see you soon.